God bless you for choosing to listen to this anointed message from Dr. Reverend Christopher Abulame of King's Tabernacle, where Jesus Christ is Lord, and we are bringing the kingdom to the nations. So we will be sharing today from the word of the Lord. If you have your Bible, please open with me to Luke's Gospel, chapter 22, from verse 19 to 20. We'll read and then read all the verses or all the scriptures as we consider these thoughts today titled, Our Common Union. Our Common Union. And so when you think about the communion, think about our common union. Common union with who? Common union with Christ. And so Luke's Gospel 22 verse 19, the Bible says here, And he took bread... And gave thanks and break it and gave unto them. He took bread and he gave thanks and he break the bread and he gave the bread unto them saying, This is my body. So Jesus was holding his body figuratively. In his hand, when he picked up that bread, and he gave thanks, and he broke the bread, and he gave it to them. So he had his body in his hands, and given his body to the disciples, as he experienced and, and shared communion with his own disciples. And don't forget, historically, if you have time to study about the communion, it was also a time of Passover. And as the Jewish people celebrated Passover, Passover celebrated the release of the children of Israel, the freeing of the children of Israel from Egypt, from the hands of Pharaoh. And that great liberty that God gave to them was year after year celebrated by the Jewish people. And in the celebration of the Passover, they look back to that event that had happened in Egypt. But in the celebration of the communion, Jesus is looking forward to what will happen in the cross. It had not happened yet, but figuratively, Jesus handled his body and handed his body to his disciples. And the same thing we do today as we reflect back to what happened on Gogo to Hills and Calvary's cross in Jesus Christ hanging on that day but it was a great event because on the third day he will be back again just like he said so he presented to disciples his own body and imagine what would have been going on on jesus's mind and the emotions that he would have been feeling on that day as he held the bread signifying his own passion his own death and above all his resurrection and so he said to them this is my body which is given to you given to you and he said do this in remembrance of me in other words when you do these things always have at the back of your mind that it's all about me not about you but about me so here today we reflect back to what christ is the essence of his personality and who he is in our lives and so this is a moment of reflection. It's a moment of, of coming together as we celebrate, but also think about where we are in our Christian work. And in verse 20, likewise, also he took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. For there to be a New Testament, there was an Old Testament. So he was saying to them, today I establish a new covenant with you. Beyond what we call agreement today, covenant is deeper than that. So today I establish my covenant with you. And so we reflect not only at the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, but also the blood by which the covenant was struck. By which the covenant was signed. It was signed upon the backs of Jesus and upon his blood. 
So communion is a time to remember what Christ did for us on the cross. Whenever we're gathered together like this, we must ask ourselves, how are we carrying the cross? It reminds us, don't forget what I said, it reminds us of what Jesus did on the cross for you and for me. But we must also reflect that. To ask ourselves, how are we carrying the cross? And now in Matthew chapter 10, from verse 37 to 38, Jesus states this. He said, he that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Verse 37, verse 38. And he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. So there's a cross to bear, there's a cross to carry. Christianity is not always a bed of roses. But assuming if it were, roses have thorns. And say, he said, we must bear that cross and Look at verse 38 very closely. It says, he that taketh not his cross. It's easier to say our cross and let's bear together and, and extend that hand of fellowship and redistribute our work with God and uh, sometimes let all the people carry more than we bear. But Jesus looks at you and me and say, you have your cross that you need to bear. He said, if I refuse to take up my own cross, he said, then I'm not worthy of him. Don't forget what I said. Communion is a time to remember what Jesus did for us on the cross. He has done it already. The cross is over. The cross is behind. But we must always ask ourselves. And we must always carry our cross. And that question should always be, how am I carrying my cross? How am I taking my cross? And the question may be, what is that cross that we're talking about today? It varies from person to person. Yes, may be that which the Lord has committed to your hand that you have not been faithful with. Maybe building yourself back up again to be that whom the Lord has called you to be. Maybe enduring the times wherein you find yourself in believing still that God is able to do a sit in a bottle of before that we can ever ask or think. Maybe loving your neighbor as yourself in lending a hand of fellowship to that who has been deserted. It may be doing that which God has called you to do. It may be just being like Jesus. And let go of yourself and let God in. And let God be your God. And just loving God with all your heart and all your might and all your strength. But what Jesus is saying here is every man needs to take his cross. Perhaps I need to find out with God what is my cross. What is my cross? To bear it all the days of my life. As I follow Jesus. And as we look at our common union. Three things I'd like to bring to our attention today. Before we proceed to the ceremony. We examine our love for Jesus. Jesus said something that said no greater love than these. Than for a man to lay down his life for his friend. And so, the cross itself and the preaching of the cross, powerful as it may be, is a reflection of the love of Jesus. That he was willing to lay down his life for you, for you, and for me. And the fact that he was willing to do that was his love. I have... 
this inscription that always helped me to understand this subject. And the inscription says to the effect that it was not the nails that kept Jesus on the cross. It was love. It's easy to think that, yeah, he was nailed to the cross and therefore it was the nails that kept him on there. It was love. He laid down his life for you. He gave up the ghost. He freely, like a lamb to the slaughter, gave himself for you and for me. So moments like this must help us again to reflect back on that love that Christ has for us. So today we examine the love of Jesus. The bread the Jews here, they're tangible, physical reminder of Christ's love. Every single element that's here in front must remind us of Christ's love for us. And every time we eat and drink, we remember the sacrifice that Jesus did. The communion is a spiritual union between Christ and Christians. That's why we say the common union. Common union because all of us as Christians have that same road, same connection to one body, one spirit, one baptism, one God, Father of all. All of us Christians. So we come to the Lord's table to express our, our inward conviction that we are one family. And we have one father. Above all, but we examine the love of Jesus for each and every single one of us. Not only that we examine the love of Jesus, we examine our own lives in Christ. The question is, how are you living your life? How are you living your life. Christ lived an impeccable life. Went to the cross. Was buried. Third day he rose from the dead. He's in heaven today as our advocate and solicitor. And he left, left for us. A great. Great honor. To be sons and daughters. Of the living God. An enduring faith. And so how am I living for Christ? I must daily examine my own life as I reflect on Christ in Christ's life. And when you read 1 Corinthians 11 and 29, as Paul began to explain the essence of the communion, he made this statement. For he that eateth and drinketh are worthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the lost body. Not discerning the lost body. How are we discerning the Lord's body today? Think about what he has committed to your hands that you have left somewhere and moved on. Think about the calling that God has placed in your life that you have abandoned. Think about the plans of God for your life that you walk away from. Think about the 50% that you are doing for the Lord, the 40% where you ought to be doing 100%. If he did 50%, we would not be here today. He fulfilled the law and the prophet. And he satisfied the holy demand of God Almighty. He did it all on the cross. He said, it is finished. He finished his race 100%. And think about your own race today. Your own life, my own life. How am I dedicated to God? What is my level of dedication to God? Not to the things of this world. Because they will pass away. The whole world and the whole earth will pass away. Glory to God. Remember this brother who was in church. And each time you tell him, I just got a new dress. He'll tell you, well, it will burn. <laughs> 
I just got a new suit and a new shoe was that it will burn. I just got a new house and well, it will burn. I just got a new car. Well, he will burn. He wasn't wi wishing us bad or evil. He's just telling the obvious that if you put your heart in those things, you are of all men most miserable. We said this morning that our affections must be on the Lord in heaven, not on the things in this world. Because he will burn. That's what Peter said. It will burn with fervent heat. And you shouldn't be here when that happened. I shouldn't be here when that happened. So let us examine our own life in Christ. How am I living my life? How am I treating my neighbor? How am I treating other people around me? How am I treating God? Examine your life. And thirdly, to examine our walk in Christ. Not only that we live in Christ and Christ lives in us, but we also are on a journey on this earth. Many weeks ago, we watched over here the, the Pilgrim's Progress. Daily, daily walk with God. And every day with God is an adventure. As you walk with him, as we walk with him, we experience him better and deeper. We're closer to him. And for those who are here this morning, I made a statement to this thing, and I've said this many times, that the closer you are to God, the farther you are from the devil. And sometimes you don't need to pray against the devil, but pray to be closer to God. Okay, you're spending too much energy focusing on the devil. Maybe you should focus on a relationship with God. Because if you are in God's bosom, the devil can't come, come close to you. The devil can't come close to you. You're, you're secured. You're safe in God's holy presence. Maybe my prayer should be, God, let me be in your presence. Rather than spend so much time fighting the devil. <laughs> Glory to God. Stay closer to God. And then God fights the battle for you. And the devil can't come close to God in the first place. So I'm safe. I'm secure. Under the arm of the Almighty. What is my work with God? The sense of all who work with God. And they truly did. And they were taken. And they were no more. Why? Because they work with God. Moses came in the presence of the Lord. The Lord said, meet me on my harp. And the, he was there with the Lord for a while. We talked about this in one of our Wednesday services. And by the time Moses came down from the mountain top, having been with God, the presence of God had rubbed on Moses. And the people saw him. The people ran away from Moses. Why? Because Moses' face reflected the glory of God. Bible said they could not steadfastly behold the face of Moses for the glory thereof. The glory of God was upon Moses' life. Why? Because Moses had been in the presence of God for 40 days, 40 nights. He experienced the glory of God in that moment of communion and intimacy with God. By the time he came out of there, God's presence came with Moses. And every demon spirit ran away from Moses. Moses didn't need to be casting out demons. Demons ran from him. <laughs> Glory to God. And so if I'm spending so much time fighting the affairs of this world and the things that happen in the world, perhaps I need to just find a way to get into God's presence. Because in the presence of God, the Bible says there's fullness of joy. And at his right hand, pleasures forevermore. There is a walk that we need to walk. And a race that we need to run. In the same 1 Corinthians 11 28, 1 Corinthians 11 28, Paul writing about the communion also expressed his thoughts and said, But let every man examine himself, so let him eat and let him drink. The communion reminds us of that work, our daily work with God. And there's a race to run. 
And this week I was reflecting on this gentleman who was from East Africa. He had been sent to run the Olympics. And he was a good Olympian. Had trained so hard for this. And he got in the race that day and with every other person who ran. With the intention of winning the prize for the day. And as he joined in the run and somehow midway he got injured. And he got injured but he continued to run. While the paramedic tried to help him and attend to him. He refused treatment and he continued to run. And as he ran, but the race was over because he was very slow from his injury. The winner had been caught and the rest of them had received the accolade of the crowd. And little by little, the people who were in the crowd started to leave because the race was all over. But the man continued to run. And he ran and he ran and he leaped and got help from his colleague and got to the finish line. But now the pavilion was empty. But there were some press people who stayed because they were fascinated. That this injured man continued to run and run and run and run as he limped to the finish line. And so in that fascination, one of the reporters asked him, Why did you continue to run in spite of your injury? And he said these words, which is very popular, and remain with me today. He said, my country did not send me 5,000 miles to the Olympi Olympics to start the race. He said, my country sent me 5,000 miles to the Olympics to finish the race. And he finished. He finished limping to the finish line. And we will in our own race with God, sustain those injuries. Have those stones thrown at us. Have the arrows shut on us. And there were times when we would not feel like running. But always to remind ourselves that Jesus did not hang on the cross, went to the grave, raised the third day, just to send us to start this race. He sent us to finish the race. And so heaven is dependent on you and me to finish the race. And I said this many times, it's not how you start. It's how you finish. There are good starters and bad finishes. But there are bad starters and good finishes. It's how you finish. And how you finish it's a function of your attitude. It's a function of your deep relationship with God. It's a function of your faith in this walk, in this way. With Paul said, I show you a more excellent way. It's a function of this way of life. That we have come to accept. And we have committed all of our lives on. And left the world, left everything that there is in the world. To accept this way of life called Christianity. But there's a race that is set before you. As you examine the love of Jesus. You examine your life in Christ. And you examine your work with the Lord. That someday the curtains of this world will fold it will all be over. But the question would be how you ran the race. Would you do like the Olympian that I just described? Who in spite of his injury, he continued to the end. Had a choice. He could have stopped, dropped out, and maybe taken the hospital. But no. In his injury, he kept going kept going. He kept going in pain until he got to the finish line where every other Olympian got to. He wouldn't let anything stop him. Because like he said, he wasn't sent there to start. Just to start. 
he was sent there to finish. And that's why we talk about him today. And we want, if there be another generation after you to talk about you and how you run your race, or run your race, and how you finish your race in spite of the ups and downs of life, the mountains and the valleys, the waters and the fire, in spite of all of the vicissitudes of life, you still head on to this Jesus who gave all for you and you're willing to give all for him too. Bow your heads as we pray, ladies and gentlemen. Bow your heads as we pray. The communion reminds us that there is forgiveness for sinners and strength for the weak and weary. Perhaps you're here today and you like to make it right with God. The opportunity is always there. You say, God, this is who I am. Like Jacob. What's your name? He said, my name is Jacob. And the Lord said, from this day, your name will no longer be called Jacob. Why? Because you admitted to where you're at in your life, where you are in your life. You recognize who you are. But in your sincerity, God said, I'll change you. I'll forgive you. I'll empower you. Perhaps you want to make it right with God today. Say, Lord, this is who I am. Not perfect. You're still working on me. But I'm ready to continue to run this race that is set before me. To the end. He that endured to the end. He that endured to the end. Receive that crown of life. So let's be reminded today as we handle these elements of the communion. That the Lord Jesus Christ is depending on you and depending on me. Maybe you need a reviver in your spiritual life. Tell them, Lord, revive a right spirit within me. Revive my spirituality. Let me be strong again in the Lord and the power of his might. Make me strong again. Yes, Lord. Maybe you need to know him better. Be closer to him. Yeah, like I said, the closer you are to him, the farther you are from the devil. Be closer to God. Tell him, Lord, draw me nearer. Draw me nearer. Draw me nearer to you. Oh, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. If you have been blessed by this message or have a prayer request, we would like to hear about it. Please call us at 401-954-6188 or visit our website at www.kingstabernacle.org. You are also welcome to join us on Sundays for services beginning at 8.30, 10 a.m. or 6 p.m. and for Wednesday Bible studies at 7 p.m. We are located at 500 Greenville Avenue in Johnston, Rhode Island. Please remember that you are always welcome at King's Tabernacle where Jesus Christ is Lord and we are bringing the kingdom to the nations.